and the lightest, uh, ultra brute, um, off the bottom end of the regular uh, scale, uh, and the very driest one that we make. In a litre of wine, four grams of sugar. So, you know, in a bottle, about half a teaspoonful. So, uh, really uh, crisp and clean. Um, we use just Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Uh, we don't grow any of the other grapes that are used in Champagne. Essentially, because we don't have to, because, uh, you know, it's a bunch of better, uh, steadier climate in uh, California than Champagne. This one's mostly Pinot Noir, it's about 70% Pinot, and the rest is Chardonnay. So a really nice, crisp and clean, perfect one to begin. In all of those different varieties, we get really quite a range of different grapes, even though they're all Pinot Noir. These ones here are Pinot Noir, uh, not easy to tell in this no. state, I have to say. <laughs> Um, so pruning will be happening. Um, in fact, I'm sure pruning's underway in some parts already. And of course, prune all the way back uh, to this uh, branch here. So all of this is growth since um, you know March of last year. So all of this will be taken off back to a single bud um, down here, and then we'll all grow again, of course. And you know, pruning grapes. All of the wines that we're going to taste all grown from uh, grapes that were uh, raised with the organic uh, farming uh, regimen. In 2015, we swapped over to a new scheme, um, more locally administered. So now we're a green certified winery and vineyard, uh, much more stringent, much more closely uh, monitored. Uh, but the wines that, that, that we'll taste are all from the uh, organic scheme. So we need underripe grapes to make wines in a similar uh, style. So high acidity, rather low sugar. So the sparkling wine harvest, on average, about the middle of August is when we begin, rather than September and October. Recent years, we've started at the beginning of, uh, of August. Um, let me see, 2016, we started right at the end of July. So this one's a Blanc de Noir, so it's all uh, Pinot Noir. And this one, actually, you see there's no date um, on the bottle. Uh, and that's because, you know, um, we comply, Eileen complies with all of the champagne rules and regulations. Um, you know, the only reason we don't call it champagne is because we're here. Um, so, um, a vintage champagne, all of the grapes from a single harvest and at least three years of aging uh, on the lees. This wine uh, is from the 2016 harvest, hasn't had that three years of aging on the lees. So, even though it's single harvest, we're not designated as a vintage uh, champagne, so there's no date. But back to here are stainless steel tanks. Um, so all of the all of Domain Chimera's production is from here, um, all done here. So uh, stainless steel tanks for the first fermentation. Um, we have 54 of these tanks, uh, various different uh, sizes, and we, uh, you know, those different juices from the different varieties, different locations, 30, 35 different juices. So enough capacity we can keep all of the juice separate at this stage. So it's a different juice gets pumped into each tank okay. uh, and then inoculate with a, uh, you know, a, a champagne style uh, yeast, a yeast that again traces back to a champagne. So um, a big dose of yeast though to overpower any of the wild yeasts uh, from the, the grape skins. Big dose of yeast, rather low sugar levels from that early harvest. This first fermentation only takes about 10 days, uh, but it does produce the majority of the alcohol in the wine. Get about 10% uh, alcohol by volume. Uh, of course, carbon dioxide gas produced uh, in the fermentation. At this point, the carbon dioxide is just allowed to escape. So all of the tanks vented up at the top and let that carbon dioxide out. Uh, heat produced as well. Don't want the wine to get really warm during fermentation. So uh, cooling jackets around the tanks. Uh, keep the temperature down during fermentation about 60 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit and that protects those delicate flavors you know if it gets too warm drive off some of the volatile compounds chemically change some of the flavor uh, compounds so uh, you know with uh, 2018 harvest we started just about the middle of um, August uh, and it went quite quickly uh, the crew was very busy again this year um, really by the time we were into uh, about the middle of September uh, all of the fermentation complete so once all of the sugar is gone, um, once the, the yeast has consumed all the sugar, nothing left for the yeast to feed on. So the yeast cells then all die off and they all settle out to the bottom. 
along with other solids. And then uh, draw off the clean wine into a fresh tank, leave all that sediment behind. And that's the racking. Um, <clears throat> So uh, once we've uh, done that racking, come on, come on. <laughs> you're good. Add to the, uh, the action sequence. Yeah. Uh, um, so at this point, we have all of those different still wines made from those different varieties of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Uh, and this is the point at which uh, Eileen uh, and the other winemakers get really uh, busy uh, with the, the key element in making delicious sparkling wines, the blending. So all of our sparkling wines and all champagne wines, they're all blends. Um, so even this one, the one you're drinking now, uh, Blanc de Noir, it's 100% Pinot Noir, but it's five or six different varieties of Pinot Noir. Uh, the Ultra Brut that we tried, 70% Pinot, the rest Chardonnay. But within that, different varieties of Pinot, different varieties of Chardonnay. In a good year like this year, um, altogether something like 12 different styles of sparkling wine being made. So each one has its own particular uh, blend. So uh, Eileen and the team, um, you know, each of those blends you can think of as being, you know, a particular style, almost a particular recipe. But um, the, the base wines are different every year. A little bit more sunshine, a little less rainfall, uh, a variation in these wines, different quantities as well. So every year Eileen and the team have to go through the process of tasting all of the different uh, wines. And then they spend from September through until about February of the following year making up those blends. It takes really a you know, huge amount of memory, remember all the flavors. Yeah, okay. um, right. So it's just they do one of the blends at a time. So doing them in sequence stretches it out over that long period. So there's actually oh. sparkling wine made within the boundaries of champagne that isn't champagne or not sold as champagne because it doesn't age for long enough. Uh, three years, if it's going to be a vintage champagne, is the minimum. But then something like the Lareve is six years of aging with the yeast. Uh, and even longer in some cases, uh, Eileen makes one version of the Lareve that has nine years uh, of aging uh, on the oh. yeast.